Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to part four of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. We're getting into some valuable insights from this week's guests that you can definitely apply to your own journey. Please definitely stay tuned for advice and inspiration that can help us all. If you missed the first part of the week in part one, two, and three, definitely go back. The show notes should be filled with all the links, so go and click on them if you need to catch up. Also, definitely subscribe to the channel and all the other ones if you can. It's going to really help the show. But for now, enjoy the rest of the story. And I remember just backing out of the apartment and going, holy fuck. And from that day forward, I knew that it was just a matter of time. And it was years. It was years of the same thing kind of repeating itself over and over of him almost dying, him going to jail temporarily, of him having, you know, I would come home for the weekend and try to help my grandparents because he would be going off drugs and he'd be in detox and he would look at me and not know who I was and punch me in the stomach and, you know, scream at me and tell me about his daughter and see people who weren't there. And I mean, this went on, it was a cycle over and over and over. I had no peace. My grandparents had no peace. It was constant. And I kind of wished he would die at some point because it became I had no life. I couldn't live my life. And, um, how old are yeah. you at this point? I was in my twenties. I was living in Atlanta. So I graduated from art school. I was doing great over here. And I just want to acknowledge myself because at the time I was just trying to survive, but I look back and I think, damn girl, Yeah. I graduated fuck. with a 4.0. I got a job the night of graduation. I was, I got my own apartment. I, I was kicking ass. And also having this incredibly toxic thing just kind of suffocating me. And um, because things were so crazy with my dad, because it just would not slow down, I eventually was like, I have to get out of here. I have to leave. I can't live here. And I, I went to Los Angeles because it was the farthest place I could possibly go where there were some weirdos and I wouldn't be the weirdo. It's and, a shame that you got that mentality though, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I just, I wanted to get as far away from my dad as I possibly could. And I had gone, these are, this is a long time period. So when it all culminated, I was 28 years old. Um, and I'll just jump to it. He, after many times going back and forth, thinking he was going to die, saying goodbye, saying goodbye. The time I went back, he did, he did die. He, he, his, everything caught up to him. His body shut down. He had cirrhosis. He looked like a pregnant old lady and he was, I was the last person he saw. I showed up, he looked at me and he went into a coma and he died two weeks later. And I have to say it was a blessing. Yeah. It was a huge blessing, although it was devastating and it took me years to heal. It, it gave me my freedom. I normally have a heap of questions, but I'm, I'm quite speechless, Kyle, yeah. to be honest. Um, yeah. I know it's a go- lot. <laughs> no, but where do we go from here then, Kyle? Because you've oh. got that. You're in, you, that's happened to your dad. You're in Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, you, 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 I know you've, you, you just mentioned you're doing really, really well in terms of apartment. You've graduated, you've got a great score and, and all of this, and you've moved to LA, you've got this new life. Um, but you've already dropped out of school before that you've changed your life to have a good, you, you, to do, to give something back to your dad. Cause you feel that's a personal responsibility. You, how, I, did you go anything, did you go into darkness yourself though, in the sense of, I mean, Let's have a look at what people typically do. Self-harm, um, taking drugs yourself, um, suicidal thoughts. I'm trying to think of every trait that of the guests that I've interviewed. How how could, I, I'm guessing, how could you avoid any of that, right? But you you know your story better than anybody else. What, what did you go through personally? Forget everybody else. Yeah, you. personally, it started in high school. I developed a... a I had anorexia for a very brief period of time that really just then went into bulimia and then Mm. obesity. Um, I would binge eat and closet eat because that was one of the few things I felt like I had control of. I was absolutely at one point in high school felt suicidal. Um, I took a ton of diet pills one day and it was very scary. Um, I, I had very little self-esteem. I allowed friends, coworkers and men to be really horrible to me. 
I allowed myself to be abused by a lot of different people. When I was in college, I had an affair with a guy who was living with his girlfriend because I felt like I was just that much trash. <laughs> so the time that all this was going on, even though I was, and I say I was doing well, I was doing well in terms of being self-sufficient, but, oh, I was screaming on the inside. I was deeply, deeply depressed and unhappy. And I sought out people who would harm me because I was so comfortable in the weirdest way possible with being harmed that it felt like the truth. And it's like you need yeah. to keep feeding that depression, isn't it? In a exactly. Way. And I, yeah. I, I mean, I went through cycles and cycles of depression and it played out in such interesting ways at that time. But I was trying so hard to survive that it really didn't, it really didn't play out in the way that it would later. Um, once I, you know, once my father had died, I just kind of continued for quite some time to recreate the trauma for myself because when we're traumatized like that and we've got complex trauma, we don't know any better than to keep recreating it for ourselves unless someone helps us to see it and to helps us to change that. And no one had, and no one did. And so I just kept, I just kept generating pain for myself, whether consciously or unconsciously. And most of it was unconscious. And I, I tolerated egregious behavior. And so I was not happy. I was yeah. doing well because I was free of my dad and I was having my own life, but I was not okay inside. Mm. I was deeply unhappy and deeply traumatized and had started going to therapy, but was nowhere near the place where I could really start to understand that anything other than trauma might be possible for me. So before we get back into um, how you began that pivotal point of getting back on track and, and, and recovery and leading your own way. You're in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't end quite there for you though, does it, in terms of what you were still going through? No, I mean, I, I, I went to Los Angeles and literally I went to Los Angeles in the middle of the night with a tiny U-Haul and very, I had a little bit of money, no job, no plan. Um, it was literally just, this is my escape. I'm doing this. Yeah. Uh, I had Which is a stepping stone, right? To yeah. Even if it's a, a stepping stone to building confidence to, or, or, or skill sets to if you are going to go through anything again, at least you've got some level of, um, I don't know what the right word is, strategies, skills, confidence, I don't know, life experience to get you through what you're about, uh, another journey you're going to embark on. Yeah. I mean, I will say at this point... This is one of the reasons why I, I call myself courageous as fuck, because it was courageous as fuck to get into was, a, yeah. for a little Southern girl who didn't have family and didn't have a clue about how life was supposed to work and no plan to go across the country to a new place. But I yeah. felt like it was literally going to save my life. Yeah. I thought to, if to, I stay there, I'm going to kill myself at some point. To lighten the mood just for 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> you thought... You thought this was going to be a 45 minute podcast, by the way. I know. Oh my God. See, it's always this way. <laughs> There's a lot here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I knew it wasn't when you said, I was like, there's no way it's going to be a 45 minute podcast. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm sorry. Um, no, it's just, it's yeah, there's a lot. But there's so many people out there that are going to hear this and go, fuck, that is courageous as fuck. And oh. I that lightens the mood as well, of course. Wanting me, wanting me so him. bad right now. <laughs> For those who can't see, Kyle's picked up a dog. What's your dog's name? This is Foggy. Oh, hello, Foggy. Hello, Foggy. Mm, yeah. I get my <laughs> flossing uh, afterwards. I'll bring her in afterwards. Um, yeah. She's called Flossy, my border collie. Uh, beautiful. Yeah, keep stroking him. Um, for anyone's watching, it'll keep it. Uh, my keep emotional it, support it. dog anyway. So. Yeah, <laughs> therapy dog, absolutely. How old is he? Oh, my gosh, he's four. Oh, she, sorry. She's four. Beautiful. He, he's four. Oh, he's, he. I thought you said she four. then. He. he no, he, he's he. four. Yeah. He's a baby. Oh, anyway. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Sorry about the time if you do need to get going, but um, we're not quite there yet. And, and we've still no, got a bit. No, we're not. Yeah. Um, sorry, Kyle. Um, yeah. So you're in LA. Um, what's the next chapter of your life? Yeah. I mean, I, I literally could talk for two more hours and I don't want to do that because I do want to get to the meat of the matter, which is where I am today. But the next yeah. chapter for me when I got to LA is because I am so brave and tenacious and resilient and all those things, I, I'm very gregarious, even though I'm, uh, you know, even though I had no very little self-esteem, I had become very skilled at making everyone around me think that I was incredibly confident. 
Yeah. And that's something I'm still able to do if I want to, but I, I'm just more real now. But I, so I just presented as this, you know, cute, young, together, creative. And I made a bunch of friends really fast. And I, I got a job in television, even though I had no idea what I was doing. Um, based on my art, I, I got hired to do to work in television. And so I got this great gig and I, I met someone and honestly, I met this person who was an artist and who I thought was incredibly gifted, incredibly intelligent. He'd been world traveled, you know, all of these things. He'd been to the, like one of the best art schools in the world. And I just, he, he liked me and a red flag, red flag, red flag, but no, no, no. He, but he liked me. And what was some of the red flags before you carry on? Before I carry on. Um, there were some personality traits that I should have, if I would known, if I'd had um, awareness, I would have been like, mm, no, mm. there was some dishonesty. There were some things, but I, I just, I ignored all of it. I was crazy about him and he was crazy about me and no one had been crazy about me ever. Not like that. And no one had ever you'd be attached to him then. Yeah. He was interested in me. He was mm. interesting and he was interested in me and I'd had boyfriends. I, I even had a boyfriend I, I sort of loved in high school, but this was different. And I was so hungry for love and so hungry for someone to want me, anybody to want me, that when he said he did, I was like, oh, I'm all yours. I'm all yours. And he really, I have a good relationship with him today. Mm. And yet he really was very wounded himself. And that's, very common for wounded people to find each other and to trauma bond and for a person like myself to just overlook anything that was not okay. And I, I just went forward head first into a relationship with him, moved in with him. We got married and we, goodness, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to take too long on this, but we, we had a really, what felt to me like a really good marriage for the first few years, for several years. And we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of friends and his, the toxicity started to show itself. And I just kept being in denial. We even went into a chapter where we wanted to have a child and, um, trauma, trauma followed me through that journey too. And that was really, really intense and difficult. Um, before you do go on, don't worry about the time. I'm more worried about the time for you, but you don't have okay. to be worried about the time okay. for me. Okay. Just so you, you know. I'm only concerned in as much as I need to let my dogs out for a minute um, at some point because I need to pee. But um, you can you can do that. You can let them. Can out I do want. that? Can I just take? Of a course. Minutes? Okay, let yeah, me just yeah. do that and I'll come right back. Okay, let me be right back. Come on. No problem. So we've just come back from uh, the dogs having a bit of a pee. I hope they're all, I hope they're all right and settled now, Kyle. <laughs> they are. They are. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I forgot where we're up to. Um, what what we were talking about? Um, your partner. Um, your were you were married at this point, you, the new relationship with the gentleman that you met in LA, you said it started to go a little bit toxic. You have a good relationship now, so we don't want to obviously upset that. Yeah. Um, but you, the relationship went a little bit toxic. How was that yeah. going for you? Well, I was starting to talk about that we had begun con considering oh, having a child. A baby. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and so... Gosh, that's a long road of the journey to motherhood for me. I It's funny because at my age now, I view those decisions quite differently than I did then. But then it just felt like the next normal thing to do. Of course, mm. I'm going to have a child. Of course, I am. And I think yeah. that in my heart, I really wanted to be a mom because I wanted to give a child what I didn't have. You know, yeah. I wanted to I wanted to create the life for a child that I had wanted but didn't get. And and that really drove my heart's desire to have a baby. And so I did get pregnant as soon as we tried. I was very fortunate in terms of fertility. Um, and then I miscarried. Um, and I had a, a journey over three years, uh, five pregnancies. And during one of them, so I, I, had, I had the first, you know, I had a miscarriage. I, I think I had a second miscarriage. And then I was pregnant again and went to the doctor and we were pregnant with twins and, oh my God, it was amazing. And, and during this time, you know, there was some arguing, there was some drinking, there was some things going on between my husband and I, not me, I wasn't drinking, um, but that were causing arguments and causing problems. But I remember just like 
for some reason, I, I just wanted this baby so badly and I just wanted it to be okay that I just kind of kept, kept going, even though, you know, I was very upset and, and, and disappointed, um, in some of his behavior. And so I was pregnant with twins. It was amazing. One of them kind of vanished. There's this disappearing twin thing that happens sometimes when one is absorbed back into the body. And, and so I had this one baby and that was good enough for me. And, um, had the pregnancy. And during it, we did have some problems. We did have some arguments. I didn't feel like he was super invested in the baby, even though he had wanted it. I didn't feel, um, as supported as I felt like I wanted to be. I'm kind of being gentle about it because I, I, you know, with respect for him, but you know, he would get blackout drunk and be up until the wee hours of the night, making all kinds of sound noise and loud and being abrasive. And I was pregnant and Long about five months into the pregnancy, we discovered that the baby had an abnormality that was terminal. And that experience was a whole separate kind of horror. It was, the experience we had was pretty brutal. A nurse just kind of walked in, looked and said, this baby's going to die. And within days of that, I had to make a horrifying choice because she had something that's called a cystic hygroma. Um... And with high drops, and in that instance, it's pretty much 100% mortality rate. And so I had to, we had to make a, a horrible decision about whether to continue the pregnancy and let her die naturally, or whether to stop it. And I chose to stop it, because I didn't want her to suffer. And I didn't, I didn't think that I could stay on planet Earth if I had to continue to carry a baby that was dying. I just didn't think I could handle it. And I was probably right. And so we had an intensely traumatic experience of needing to stop her heart and over a course of a three day process to, um, once she was, this is so hard to talk about. Once she was passed to have her taken from me, I, I could not even go into labor because of her condition. She would have come out not intact. And so I had to have a a very challenging um, surgery um, that included days of, you know, doing things to open my cervix. It was all, it was very, very intense and very, very traumatizing. And actually they took her a day early because I I went into distress and started hemorrhaging and having all kinds of problems. And so the entire process was incredibly devastating. Um, I, I, I would say it was one of the most traumatic things of all the things I've been through. One of the most traumatic things I've ever experienced in my life. And the pain was unimaginable. And, you know, we made it through it. My husband and I, we were both deeply sad. It was a horrible experience. We made it through it. Um, went on to get pregnant a couple more times, a couple more miscarriages, had every doctor everywhere looking at me, taking all kinds of tests, trying to figure it out. And I want to acknowledge that during this time, the narrative was even building stronger. This is your life. This is what you get. You don't get to have things. You don't get to have joy. You don't get anything easy. If you get it, it's not going to be easy. There's going to always be pain. And I, this incident with the loss of my baby girl definitely cemented that belief. And I say that because what I allowed to happen continuing further through the years for some time, it was informed by that belief. And so in the wake of her death, I had to go back to work. We were still trying to figure out why, you know, she had, why this had happened. And through a multitude of testing and finally finding this beautiful human being who did the right test, we discovered what it was. And I had had a deformity in my uterus again, I just can't have anything normal. Apparently that's what I thought. And so I had to have reconstructive surgery and I had it. And a month later I got pregnant again. And in the, uh, several months into the pregnancy, um, I, I'm going to say this in a way that's just sort of encapsulating the whole thing, but I had what looked and felt like another miscarriage. I was taking a nap. I had my belly. I was pregnant. It was it was just, it was a juicy moment because I thought I would really get to have this. I really get to have this. And I went up and went to the bathroom and I I lost a huge amount of blood and a mass. And this was a moment where 
I haven't really alluded to this much, but I'm a very intuitive person and I do, I do have mediumship um, skills and I do, I've always had this intuitive nature where I would hear things and understand things that didn't make any sense. And I had woken up and I was in the middle of this horror where there was blood everywhere. I was screaming that it was happening again. It was happening again. This was the fifth time. And I fished whatever it was out of the toilet. This is so graphic. I'm sorry. And I put it into a bag and my husband and I were racing to the ER and he was just, you know, as talking, you know, he was in shock. He was so upset and everything was, we were both just so upset. And all of a sudden I had this feeling come over me and it was like, it was like someone just laid a warm blanket over me and I heard the words, it's okay. It's okay. And I just, so I repeated it to him. I said, it's okay. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I said, I don't know. I don't know why, but I think it's okay. I don't know. But I just, I, I, I think it's okay. And we went to the ER and we got to the room and they put the bag, we put the bag down with the contents in it and they laid me on the table and they put the wand on my, on me. And she goes, you see that? And she points and there's the baby and there's the heartbeat. And she said, there's your baby. It's okay. And I said, then what is that? Yeah. And long story short, it was a twin. I was pregnant Fuck. with another set of twins unbeknownst to us. And that can happen sometimes. You don't see the other one. Um, and I had miscarried the twin. And then the remainder of that pregnancy was about as high risk as you can imagine. And It was high risk anyway, wasn't it? It was high risk anyway. And now it was tenfold high risk because for the next several months until I gave birth... I would be on bed rest. I would start bleeding. I'd race to the hospital. It was just the whole pregnancy was incredibly stressful. And I will say that my husband and I, we stuck together, man. We, he was, he, he showed up for me. He, he wanted this baby. I wanted this baby. I remember days just laying on the sofa, praying, lighting candles, begging, whatever is out there to please let me have this. Please let me have this. Please don't take something else away from me. And even though it was a very high risk pregnancy and I had to have a scheduled cesarean because he was upside down sideways and there was all these variables, I did have my son and he was healthy and it was a miracle uh, to say the very least. Yeah. And I thought I can remember the feeling the morning he was born. I remember him being on like right here and I was just sobbing and sobbing and saying, I love you. I love you. I love you. And I was so grateful. Um, and that, was such a gift to me. It was such yeah. a gift that I got to have this normal thing that so many people got to have and that I get to be a mom. And, and it was really, it was really difficult. I did not do well. Um, my incision opened. I had infections. Breastfeeding was a nightmare. There were all kinds of, there was all kinds of aftermath. Um, nothing went the way it would go if everything was healthy and fine. It was just kind of awful. Um, within days of coming home, I had an infection. I had to go back and forth to the hospital for two weeks, having stuff put in, taken out. I'm trying to nurse. It's going really badly. Um, and you know, having a baby, the aftermath of having a child, which I know, you know, is like, it shit is hard. It's intense. And my body was just in excruciating pain. And so the journey into motherhood was continuing to continuing to be really challenging for me. And my relationship became strained. Um, it was almost as if right after our son was born, my husband was just not happy and not kind and didn't like his life. And our, those, those first couple of years of my son's life were, were fraught with a lot of, arguing a lot of upset. Um, it was, it was just really hard. It was really, really hard. And ultimately he and I divorced. Things got to a point where it was so toxic that I realized I couldn't put my son through what I'd been through. I couldn't, even though it's not at all what I wanted or not at all what I imagined I would have, I had to let go. You know, my husband had an affair he was becoming very angry all the time. He kind of scared me at times. He, How? Um, he would get, he would drink, he would get loud. He would become verbally abusive. Um, there was a night when my son was just a little thing 
he was like barely three at this point, and we were sitting at the table and at a, we were having an argument, and my husband told me to sit down, shut up, and eat. And my son was right there. And I remember looking down at my plate and thinking that was it. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I can't do this. This is, this is not, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And shortly after I, I asked for a separation and we had a very ugly um, and difficult divorce and became a single mom. Um, uh, how, so uh, yeah. after that, then how do you have a good relationship now? I'm not, uh, well, I want to just say, say, I wouldn't say it's a good relationship. We don't have much of a relationship. We talk every so often. Okay. And that has been because he's done a lot of work of late and I've done a lot of work over the last 12 years to get to a point where I know my, I know what boundaries are. I have them. They are firmly in place. And the kind of relationship I have with him is one where we talk every six months. So. Okay. And when we talk, That's it's, good. it's fine. It's not, we're not friends. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, but uh, it's amicable enough because we have a, a human being we created together. And in the interest of my son's well being, I will not go into a place with his father where I'm bad talking him or having fights with him. I'm not doing that. Sure. Um, yeah. Or my son, because yeah. uh, <laughs> I went through that and I don't want it for him. <laughs> How old is your son now? 22. Wow. What does he do? He is figuring himself out. He's living in his own place. Um, I'm not going to tell you where he lives, but he's, he's living yeah. in his own place. He has a girlfriend. He has a job he likes. He's dead set on, you know, some certain things for his life. He wants to go into the military. He's very yeah. bright. He's very, uh, he's gorgeous. He's very talented musically and creatively. And I like him. Oh. I like him. And he had, he had some tough times. In growing up, there were some tough things that happened to him. I couldn't completely protect him because we never can. Mm. But um, but he's, I look he's at got... him. Hmm, Sorry, go ahead. Go. I say no, I just go. look at him now, and I think you didn't do you did okay. You know, I was yeah. always horrified and, and really concerned that I was a terrible mom and I should never have had a kid, and I was worried that I had somehow harmed him in some way. But mm. about two years ago, I remember having a conversation with him, and I just saw him, and I thought. He's good. He's a good, he's a good human being. I bet. Um, that was, that's everything to me. You, 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 you must have done a good job. Uh, you know, um, everything that you went through and the journey you guys, you went on personally, not just with your husband and the pregnancies, but even prior to that, like it's yeah. just unimaginable. Right. And, um, he's got you as a mother who's been through so much. If he ever did, need you <laughs> he had you to go to right and yeah he did he did come to me we're very close we talk yeah. at least every other day um our relationship is very strong and you know the truth of the matter is i'm very clear at this point in my life that i broke a very long line of generational trauma in my family i reckon my so. son was not abused by me i did yeah. not abandon my child yeah. i I did as much as I was capable of doing with what I had to, to give him as good of a life as I was able to give him. And I am uh, grateful for that. And I'm sure of how open and vulnerable you are. He's aware of your journey. Oh yes. Yeah. He's yeah, aware. Wow. Not all of it. And he knows the podcast is out mm. and he's chosen thus far, as far as I understand, not to listen to it. And that's fine. Yeah. I've told him, listen, it's hard and you're going to, you know, it's, it's, it's very, it's very challenging and you can listen to it or you cannot. And I'm not telling people about you, you know, I'm mm. maintaining privacy, of but course. not with me. I'm telling my story truthfully. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Oh. Well, is there anything, is there anything that we've missed then before we get into how you lead in your own way and you're recovering the steps because I, you know, I, I know the viewers will be able to take so much away from you and your uh, reflect on, they already know the ending because of how we started the podcast, which yeah. is, I think is beautiful. Right. I yeah. think I want to start off with that. Um, whether it's in detail or the, the way you did, it was great because we can go into it. Um, yeah. And I know the viewers will be able to take pieces and tools and skill sets and use them in their own way. That's specific to their scenario and right. their journey. Um, 
where uh, you start I'm, I'm quite speechless if i'm honest so i don't know, I know where to go I, with it but i know um, I, you, <laughs> where, yeah where can we take your journey now how does it start to look for you now you've okay. made this pivotal change you've separated let's go Okay, so I, I did make a very gigantic change, and I'm afraid to tell you that it wasn't in the wake of the divorce from his father. It was many years later. Okay. Um, when my son was older, I actually dated a man that was a very toxic individual, and even though everything in my body was screaming no because I had started to do some kind of internal work at that point, yeah. those old stories about what I deserved were louder, and I married him. So I got married. So we're not done. Time. We're not done. We're not done. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.